Well, good morning to all of you shooters and reloaders out there, and also a special good morning to all of you Three Circles passengers and members out there. This video is actually the third one that I'm actually posting on both the Patreon site and also on YouTube, so everyone can see it. The topic has a lot of relevance to all of us, and it's not being done on any other video. I like to present information that's new and different and and also not on other YouTube videos or other videos on any other platform. And so this one actually applies to that. What I'm doing is putting together another order on Midway and uh, this happens to be a Lee order. So I'm ordering a bunch of bullet molds on all this kind of thing and so what I like to do is toggle back and forth between the Lee site and the Midway order site. So here I go and normally I go to the Lee site and that's their home page and I go right to the bullet casting right there. And so when I go to my bullet casting you notice that that they have one of my videos on casting is actually linked on the Lee Precision bullet casting site. So I feel very honored that they would put one of my videos on there to feature their products. So on this order is the 32 caliber bullet that's 314 diameter that I need to do and Dick Tickles and I have been kind of working together on that project so that's a 327 Federal. We're loading this 314 diameter 90 grain semi wide cutter. But I'm also ordering rifle molds. I'm ordering the hollow base 4570 that's 405 grains and I'm going to order the 450 grain and also the 500 grain for the 4570. Should be fun casting those. I've been going to the Lee Precision site fairly regularly but I've been missing this. The opening paragraphs here are from John Lee who is the CEO of the family owned business of Lee Precision. But what I've been missing is the fact that there's actually a picture of Richard Lee right there, but then something sad. There's a death date on there. It says they're in God's hand, September 22nd, 2018. So apparently Richard Lee passed away. There hasn't been any notoriety about that. There hasn't been any announcements. You, have, you don't see it on, you haven't heard it from the shooting TV shows and all this kind of thing family that's running the business must be in mourning right now. It's been four months since Richard Lee passed away and what John Lee did was he wrote a very nice eulogy here. Turns out that Richard Lee actually spanned my entire reloading career and what he has done is actually kicked off this topic of this video today and that is it's a coffee chat but it's, it's thinking back about American inventors and innovators. That's what Richard Lee is and was. He is an amazing American success story without even using capital because what he did was in his garage he started putting out the Lee loaders. And the Lee loaders are unique and so different than what was out there already because with the Lee loader you could reload on a rock or on a log. Tremendously versatile and what it did was it, he brought many many into the reloading ranks that got their start with the Lee loaders. And because of the pricing of the Lee loaders many many who never would have reloaded and you could say that he drop kicked an entire industry. And then he came out with affordable die sets and presses. He allowed many to get more deeply into the reloading hobby and enthusiasm that we all enjoy. And I recall when he came out with die sets and presses that were affordable and allowed a lot of us to get more into the game of reloading than ever before and encourage us to do so. And then not only that but when he came out with his carbide die sets they were half the price of the other companies that already came out with carbide die sets. And we wanted those carbide dies, but they were pricey. And when his came out at half the price, 
we just jumped all over that. And that allowed a lot of shooters to get more into handgun shooting and shoot even more because we could enjoy using carbide dies and not have to do all that tedious lubing of the cases. And Richard Lee knew that. Think of all the extra gunpowder, the extra brass, the extra bullets that were sold all because of Richard Lee allowing reloaders to really get into that activity. But Richard Lee didn't stop there. He knew that we wanted to shoot. He knew that we wanted to compete. And that required lots of bullets. Practically single-handedly drop-kicked the industry of bullet casting. He came out with the first molds that were affordable. They cost anywhere around seven to eight dollars for a bullet mold. And then he came out with six cavity bullet molds because we wanted lots of bullets. We didn't have to buy the big expensive gang molds. We had six cavity molds that were cheap, easily affordable, and a joy to use. But then he didn't stop there either because it took hours, tedious work, lubing and sizing cast bullets. So he came out with tumble lube, the Lee Liquid Allox, unheard of innovation, and his sizing dies were easy to use and inexpensive, affordable. But not just affordable, but high quality. They worked well. But he even took it one step farther and came out with tumble lube molds that didn't even require sizing and were easy to lube with liquid allox. Sure, he went away from tradition there, but that was innovation but innovation in a positive way. It worked. You won't hear this, but Lee actually created an integrated system for bullet casters to get lots of bullets that worked well. And that all ended up with the Lee factory crimp dies that are industry standard and best crimp in the business. But not just doing the crimp, allowing sure function and reliability. And Richard Lee did not forget the rifle shooters because his creation of the Lee neck size collet die today gives us concentricity and low bullet run out that is unheard of in terms of the value because the dies cost something like $23 each. And you won't hear this anywhere else either, but you can use those neck size collet dies and actually uniform the neck thickness without having to do turning. You just have to use them a certain way. So even today, his sons like John, who is doing the CEO, and, and Andy, who heads up the casting department, they are continuing on with innovation. Look at the uh, new presses they've come out with. And not often spoken of is the fact that because of Lee offering the tremendous value and the affordability of all the systems, it actually helped drive the competition so that we could get the products from other manufacturers also at more reasonable price points. All because Richard Lee took on so much of the, of the market share. Yes, he was an inventor. Yes, he was an innovator. And it's on the same kind of DNA that people like John Moses Browning had. Because what John Moses Browning did was he noticed that when guns fired, there was a muzzle blast that actually made the dust fly in front of prone shooters. And that caused him to think, I should be able to use that energy there to drive the action. The same DNA that caused Samuel Colt to develop the revolver. And the list goes on and on. And Richard Lee is right in there, but he hasn't really gotten his due. I'm saddened to see that uh, Richard Lee passed on, but... The good news is his family is carrying on with the tradition and efforts. Today, the business square footage is two acres and provides jobs for hundreds of people in the Hartford, Wisconsin area. So when I start casting those lovely round nose 230 grain 45 ACP bullets out of that six cavity mold that's coming, I'm going to give uh, Richard Lee a little salute and say thank you for all you've done. It affects our reloading almost every day we reload. No, I never met the man, but I'll tell you one thing. If I had grown up in the Hartford, Wisconsin area, I would have gone to work in his factory, and my life would have been totally different. You know, you would have thought that I would learn by now that coffee stunts your growth. 
Bye for now.